We are here in ancient Greece. Hey, everybody. This is Steven Sotillo, editor-in-chief of Kotaku, and I'm with Paul Tamayo. So hey, hi, Paul. what's up, everybody? And this is actually your save file that I'm uh, moving my dirty cursor all Tis. through and everything. Paul, you've been playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey for a bit? I have for about 19 or hours or so. So you're done with the game, right? No, oh, look, look at all this map you still need to defog I here. just scratched the surface. This game is <laughs> enormous. <laughs> it's massive. Wow, you haven't done any of this? No. <laughs> wow. I'm super under... If I go there, I, if I trip on a rock, it'll kill me, so I can't right. even go over there. You're a level 17 character, as we can see in the top right, and these are zones for level 26 characters, 22, whatever. So um, today is the first day that we are able to stream Assassin's Creed Odyssey. We've had uh, copies for review and video prep and stuff like that since late last week. And we're going to be able to run a review next week, early next week. The game goes on sale technically on the 5th. Well, actually, no, uh, nominally on the 5th, but actually on the 2nd if you pay for the $100 Super Duper version. Um, but Ubisoft sent us a copy. And so we're not just going to show you the map, but we're going to show you a bit of the action of the game. And I'm going to give Paul the controller so he can play his own damn game in a yeah. minute. But um, I have, to, as some Kotaku readers know, played Assassin's Creed games obsessively. And I thought maybe it would make sense for me to just start and talk a little bit about how this game works and how it's a little different from others, including Origins, which it, it may seem to resemble a lot when you first look at it. So um, first thing is it has a lot of naval stuff to it. And so we've got a boat and we can sail forward. Paul is playing as Alexios, mm -hmm. um, who is a descendant of King Leonidas. Spartan general, and um, we'll talk a bit more about the character and all that in, in, in a minute. Um, but if you've played Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, you'll recognize some of the naval stuff. They've also had that in uh, in, a, in a Origins in limited capacity. But we've got this whole huge map of ocean to explore and land to explore, and we're playing the game as one of two characters. You either can play as this guy, Alexios, or you can play as Cassandra, who basically looks like Wonder Woman. And they are siblings, like I said, descendants of King Leonidas. And you're playing a game that's essentially more action role-playing game than Assassin's Creed games have been before it. Mm -hmm. Very much, though, built on the foundations that were laid with Assassin's Creed Origins, the ancient Egypt game from last year. So we've got lots of loot to gather, more pieces of loot than, than last time, and that they had outfits, and now they've got... Boots, chests, head, head pieces. What's your strategy here, uh, Paul, in terms of which loot you keep and and what you're doing here? I see you got a you got a dagger going on for your yeah. Your attack. I just got a new axe. So I'm tr I'm checking that out, but I mainly I prioritize the uh, daggers. I love the daggers, just like for quick kind of dashes here and there. But for the most part, I like to have a balance between like assassin like assassin gear and then stuff that'll like actually protect me if you know S hits the F. And I have to to scrap in battle, but um, yeah, that's kind of my that's kind of my strategy overall. I also got to have a really funky helmet, which you toggled off. Oh yeah, well, let me put that back on. For that well, back I want people on. to see Alexios. Yeah, but look at that helmet. It's it's a, it's a great helmet. That's a nice helmet. That yeah. is a nice helmet. And you have your horse with an epic skin on it. This is a skin that actually came with. I think the they gave us the the download code they gave us was like for a deluxe edition. So this might not be available to anybody, um, but it makes your horse look a little little cooler. And um, so this is like a lot of things comparing Origins to Odyssey where, yes, they had gear, loot, and everything, and there's more slots. Well, same deal with abilities, which oh, is, yeah. is a big elaborate skill tree that slightly resembles what was in Origins, but they've gone a bit wilder with it. And a key thing to talk about is how, yes, there are some passive abilities, like uh, the ability just to do a leap of faith, or even the ability, I think this one, to have more damage when you assassinate people. But there are active abilities, and these are key, and you're going to see this throughout as Paul plays, as he activates different sort of combat moves. So why don't you talk about what you've done here? Yeah, so for, for the melee ones, um, map to like each individual face button there, triangle, You can hold down square. L2 and then hit one of those four buttons, yeah. Yeah, oh, it's L1 for the melee, L2 for the ranged. So L1, melee, uh, X I have a healing thing, which I think is super useful. It, it takes a little bit of your focus meter, yep. and it just gives you back some health, which I think is super handy. I have the Spartan kick, of course, map to square, which That's is the like... That's one they've used in all the marketing, kick oh, a guy off the thing. It feels real good. Right. Um, so that's that's also fun if you're near a cliff and you gotta you know dispose of some enemies quickly. Yeah. Um, triangle, I have this like really cool oh, assassin okay. ability, which which I love. It's like this. Uh, I think it was in in Origins as well, right? No, you, no, it was. This was in oh. Shadow of War, in Shadow of Mortar, <laughs> oh, maybe. Right, right. Which this game seems to crib a little bit from, but it's this teleport thing you oh. can see an animate there. It's good. It's good. Like it, it lets you just, and you can also chain it. So if you, if there is right. someone else around who might see you, you can just hit triangle and get them too. Yeah. And then circle is like a, it lets me poison.
poison in my blade. So I, if yeah. I hit them, it'll just, you know, take away at their health little by little. A little Belbiv DeVoe right there for you. Exactly. Never trust a, <laughs> never mind. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that's pretty much my, my strategy. And for range stuff, I have, um, for square, I have this thing where it lets you just sort of guide the arrow, like oh, mid-flight. Yeah, so they had that in the last game. Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty neat. And then triangles, just like in case there are uh, two dudes next to each other. I'm doing that. Yeah, I can just sort of take care of them both, like sort of like a widespread arrow shot, which is really right. handy. So these are, so so you'll, you'll understand this as we start playing, but... I wanted to show this just in advance in that this is a bit of a different scheme than what they've used before. And what it is doing is it's basically saying, hey, we can give you some special abilities that make cater more towards assassin play style. So these sort of stealth assassination moves and some other stuff like that. We can give you some super duper melee combat moves like this bull rush charge or whatever. Yeah. But then we're going to make you choose which of these special moves you want to be able to use in mid combat. And you have to choose from four. So notice Paul's unlocked bull rush but he's not put it in his four no. melee quick attack slots. So he can't use it on the fly in combat. And the way it works when he's in combat is he's gonna be building up adrenaline and then spending it to use any of the four abilities. So you're choosing. So when I've been playing, I've actually been loading up my melee thing with just assassination moves because I'm playing more as a stealthy assassin character and I don't really care about having like the Spartan kick anymore. I think I do have the health regen and you'll get how that works. Um, as we go into it, we can show you, I think the ship thing. So you have an upgradable ship. Um, and then there's a mercenaries thing we can show you. We're not allowed to show you the cultists. I think it's, I don't even know because I haven't even gotten to it in the version <laughs> of the game I'm playing. I'm only eight hours in and I've barely seen any parts of the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's get into it. We'll go back to mercenaries later as that sort of comes up more naturally. So I'm going to hand the controller over to Paul. Here we go. And uh, why don't you talk a bit about what you've been up to in the game and where we're heading. Uh, so right now we're headed to a pirate island, which is uh, right off the uh, right off the coast of Athens, which is really cool. I'm going to hold down X so we go a little faster. And if you hit square... You can just cruise control it and look at the little dolphins. dolphins. Next to it. That's pretty. A lot of sharks in the game. Yeah. Dolphins as well, though. So you know, know your dorsal fins, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very important. Uh, so yeah, blue so, ships, red oh. ships. I haven't figured out yet. Are, are some of those friendlies and enemies? Because I haven't really done much on the naval stuff. I think it really depends on uh, who you start like fights with. I, I've been beefing a lot with uh, with Spartans. Right. So they're not really, they're not my biggest fans. So every time they see me in the sea, sometimes, uh, well, not every time, but usually I can't tell and, and until like that little meter shows up that yeah. like, oh, they're, they see you. Uh, and then we just have to, the, uh, you know, the S hits the F once again. And it's Spartans to to and it's Athenians is the other major faction, right? Yeah. And then there's also pirates you can encounter right. on the seas. So actually, why don't we zoom out to the map one more time? I just want to show people one other yeah. thing here. So this is a major difference from what people have seen in Assassin's Creed games before. Is that every one of these zones, notice the red or the blue outline mm. to them. So every one of these zones is controlled by one of those two factions. Um, I don't, red is Spartans and blue is Athenians. Mm -hmm. And when you go to an area, like if you were to go to the province or whatever of Attica, which is, you see that it's controlled by the Athenians, and you see that Pericles is in charge there, and you see that it's got a full fortification strength. If for some reason you wanted to flip that for the Spartans, you can do that. Mm -hmm. And the main way that I've been taught in the game so far how to do that is to do all these little missions that either involve like burning goods, stealing stuff, killing certain people, and it will lower the fortification bar. And the more that you do that, the more the leader will be exposed for an assassination. You can try to get him right away, but he's usually super high level, yeah. right? So once he's lowered down, you can move in for the kill more easily. His guards dissipate. When I was doing it in one region, the guy had left his castle and was like getting attacked by wolves in the wilderness. <laughs> like he was already really stressed. And so it was very easy for me to mop it up. Nice. And then I was able to f t flip control for the other side. Yeah. Now I don't, I haven't played enough. Paul, you might be able to explain more why you would be flipping for one side versus the other, but you're doing this thing on this sort of meta strategic level for the entire map. Yeah, pretty much. And like, like uh, Stephen mentioned earlier, like there, there was a moment in the opening area of the game where I encountered a high level, I guess, uh, lieutenant or something. And uh, yeah, earlier up here. Yeah. Oh, wait, where is it? Kefalonia. Yeah, I think we should just keep sailing and we can, people will now start seeing these region markers. Yeah, we're we headed down them. though. We're headed south here. So um, yeah, and like when I first encountered him, I just got like mopped up. Like it was, he was surrounded by a bunch of people and uh, and I came, uh, I encountered him later on when I lowered that meter and he was just easy to, he was by himself like Steven said, which I think was really cool. Um, by the way, uh, Fantasy Star, we're playing on PS4 Pro. And there are many bow types. Um, there's many everything types. We were just showing the ones that were selected. But if you clicked into any of those inventory screens, if somebody was asking, you would see, you know, I assume, yeah, Paul, you're carrying a whole lot of swords, a whole lot of melee weapons and what have you. 
Yeah, I have. I have a. I also just like just started using this, so I'm I'm not very good with it. But initially, you can only carry one melee weapon at a time. Oh my goodness, clean that up, man! Oh. You can't just. It's really haphazard what you can dismantle and what you can't. Because I thought they wouldn't let you dismantle. Yeah, I haven't been doing certain any of things. That. I've been oh, I've been dismantling like crazy because that's how you get the the loot in order to buy upgrades and stuff. There's a whole engraving system. If you guys are seeing perks on mm -hmm. when he highlights. You basically, this weapon is already has engrave, engravings that allow it to do extra warrior damage and damage on Spartan soldiers. But you can go and unlock another engraving by yeah. going, to, going to the blacksmith. You can you unlock engravings all the time through stuff that you're doing in the game. So you get like 50 kills of animals. You get a certain kind of engraving. Let's go back to sailing. Though, Let's so do we, it. So we get to the thing. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of like systems-based stuff. And so if people are into like the math of games and they want to feel a bit of that, that Destiny vibe or the Diablo vibe or whatever, which already was being pushed by Origins, you'll get that in Odyssey. Definitely. Um, oh, whoa. Uh, what, what, I guess that Whoa. was that area's loading. I feel like the waves are a bit more intense than, than what I recall in, in uh, some of the other naval stuff in other Assassin's Creed games. Like you're, going, you're bouncing over some big waves here. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Uh, we're talking so much. I'm talking so much. You can't hear the sea shanties being sung. That's one of my favorite touches. I'll, I'll be quiet for a second. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, hear let's, let's let that rock. They stopped oh, singing. They st of course they stopped <laughs> singing. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, no, it's really cool. I, that's one of my favorite touches, especially when you like when you dock and stuff. They start like right. chanting. So if we go out of travel speed, you probably get the interface Slow that'll the that'll tell us a little more about maybe this area. No, okay, well, we have to. You can either find a dock or or you, you can you can just jump off and swim, and you may see when he comes off this some other interface options. I'm looking for a dock. Oh no, this is oh, pirates. So we're not. Oh no, there is a faction here. So this is a pirate islands and it's under Athenian control. That's interesting because huh. it's, oh, it's, yeah, right. it's surrounded by white. I'm not really sure why that why that would be the case, but maybe Athenians still have control of the pirates. Okay, let's just let's let's get off here. No, 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 wrong button. Sorry. There you go. You can recruit characters from the game world to become lieutenants on your ship. They'll give you different perks. You can also recruit those people to come in and help as an assistant to, in combat, so they rush in to help out. Um, so again, more system level, you know, systemic stuff. The waves, I don't, just don't remember waves crashing to the shore like this, even in Origins. I yeah. gotta go, go back and double check, but it's a nice, nice bit nice of techno yeah, technological that. achievement. Beautiful game, um, from what Paul and Heather, who's also been playing the game, she's gonna be reviewing it for us. Oh yeah. Have said the, the diversity of environments is out of control. Yeah, it's really nice. There, there are different islands that seem to be, ha like, have different biomes, which I, which I love. I love, I'm all about the biomes. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to uh, synchronize first before we get started on this on this mission. Okay. Also, take a quick look at this right. island. You sure you're not already synchronized there? I see a great the the. F oh the, yeah, did I? The bird come is here? green. You've been here. I've been here. Man, I, I'm just I'm just that good. I've yeah, already you've synchronized. Been here. You already oh, you already did something in this. Well. Maybe you did like a story mission. We're not doing story missions or anything like that. We're not gonna let people know too much about what's going on in the game. What we are happy to answer as many questions as you guys have, and we'll we'll do our best. I'm not sure if there is any uh, any collectible shanties. Paul, have you found any collectible songs? I th no, not that I not that I've seen so far. That'd actually be really cool. Um, so let's let's activate this side mission here. Release date is October 5th for the regular version. Oh, well, second for the if you you pay to play it early. I'm just preparing something for my friends. I've been here all day, but I still need more clay. I need enough for all of them. Here you go, some dialogue choices here. Big difference from previous Assassin's Creed games. What you're doing for your friends is very nice. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Really? You think so? I was thinking of getting them some other things, though. You're a generous friend. What do you want to give them? I want to give them some nice jewelry. <laughs> you mean jewelry? That's what I said. You don't look like you can afford any. Honestly. I know. That's why I was going to get some shiny stones in the abandoned mines and a few pearls from the lagoon. But I've been stuck here all day with the clay, and the abandoned mines are kind of scary. Do you think you could help me get some gifts for my friends? It make them happy, and that'll make me happy. I'll make some gooey for you too for helping me. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Gladly, young lady. <laughs> I'll see to it you get the best pearls and shiny stones. And so the dialogue I mind some gooey myself. Yay! Thank you. You're really nice for a big scary looking person. 
And then you can, yeah. yeah, there's more elaborate dialogue choices. And you see, you, he get more information. Yellow is the is the signal that it's going to either move the conversation okay. forward or end the conversation, as opposed well, to allow well, you, you to go back and get more and more information. So um, I'm going to try to keep up with some of the questions that are in here. How does switching off map markers work? Well, you can do you can basically mark in one uh, sort of uh, I guess waypoint to toggle on and off, similar to recent games. Um, have you played enough to recommend this over Origins? Um, I played Origins for 140 hours. I've only played this game for eight hours, so it's a tough comparison. I find that in most cases, the systems that were in Origins have been improved in this game, including, and this is cool. You're playing on. You're not playing with. You're playing in the the more the less guided mode, right, Paul? Yeah, um, you don't have the yellow circles on your map for where things are. Um, on my map, let's let's triple check. I I, I put the HUD on minimal. But I, oh no! You you oh so you are playing. So Paul is playing on the default version. Yeah, Actually, let's show yeah. people this. So go, go back to the map. Oh, oh, sorry. So this is the traditional way that Origins had worked as well. So that there'll be something to do, and they'll tell you it's in this yellow zone. So you could read the textual clues on the left about where to go, and materials can be gathered within the cradle of Vincent and Seraphos, pearls, and whatever. Okay, um, and in this case, it's like sort of it's already telling you where to go. But if you now go to main menu mm -hmm. and you go to options. options yes. Game and then gameplay, and we yeah. go to game mode. We take guided off into exploration mode, which is what they say in the beginning. This is how this game was meant to be played. You now see that there is no yellow circle. And this is, I think, an answer to people who felt like Origins was hand-holding a bit too much with its quests and wasn't allowing people to just have the pleasure of exploring and discovering themselves. Mm -hmm. And so you turn that off, and now you still have to really read the text clues and figure it out. It's still when you get close, they'll say, hey, you're nearby, send your bird into the air. Yeah. And like Origins had Sanu, you have a bird called Icaros, and he'll fly around and he'll target things. And the more you play the game, you're upgrading Icaros so that he spots things more easily. Uh, but I can't really compare... Um, you'll get more of a sense of that, I think, through our, our subsequent coverage. I don't know, I have no idea if Bayek shows up. Bayek is from three centuries into the future of this. This is the furthest back any Assassin's Creed game has ever been set. This is before Origins, which is, of course, weird because that was a game about the origins of the Assassin's Order. So mm -hmm. what, what in the world is this game about? Um, uh -oh. What version is this? Is it the PS4 version? And um, do you guys shut the hell up? Yeah, but not right now. <laughs> Uh, and <laughs> interface HUD seems almost identical. Yeah, there are some some tweaks to it. Um, the best tweak of all is that you can turn off almost everything piece by piece. There's a menu that lets you toggle off the health bar or the 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 everything that you see here. I've turned off enemy damage numbers, for example, so I don't see numbers sweating oh. off of characters. Yeah, I, I just realized I don't have arrows right now, so I'm gonna have to. Uh... You can craft them in your inventory. Oh, let's do it. So. It's a little weird how that works, but you're carrying enough stuff that, yeah, just go into that. Should be able to do it. Heck yeah. Square. Squared up. There we go. Yeah, I like to, uh, just a couple love taps. Oh, I love, I love, like, oh man. There we go. So much for that shark. <laughs> But lots of similarities to the interface that people would have seen on Origins, including like if he hits L3, it'll say uh, here. No, here's where. I already got him. Oh wow, that goes kind of deep. Yeah. Are you not gonna go down there? Should we? We'll yeah. do it. We'll do it yeah. for the culture. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. And that's where you need to go for this thing, anyway. Oh, you're right. Yeah. If he were to hit L3, it would have said this area has certain like, things to find in order to 100% it. I think it's a one treasure chest. Oh, right there. Yeah, you're getting him. Oh, here we go. Oh, this, this is, is just special. Like this, the, uh, that's the treasure to 100% the area. So you got yourself a mace. Oh, but that other thing close. you just swam over is... Oh, yeah, I got yeah. it. Nice. When I checked, when I saw the game in the spring, they, I asked them about the fact that Origins had, you know, so many quests, nearly 200 quests, and most of them were solved by killing somebody, which I, I was like, it just feels a little bit like kind of the same ending to every quest after a while. Do you have other ways to solve things? They said yes, and tr true enough, even in the very first missions that I was playing in the game, there were options of like, scare the guy, intimidate the guy, in order right. for to have him do something. Um, I also, I don't remember this from Origins, but like, 
if they give me a stealth quest in this mission in this game, and I kind of screw it up at some point, and and I get into more of a uh, out in the open fight, oh, I would come back and the mission giver would be like, I told you to keep quiet. Why didn't you keep quiet? And um, they would sort of know how I handled the mission. I got to Spartan kick this boar real quick. Hold on. You said that the boar stuff has been stressing you out in this game, right? Oh my god. So there's a legendary boar fight. Um, early, pretty early on in the game, and it's one of the hardest things I've ever played in my life. I still haven't done it. I, I have to go back and do it now that I'm, I'm a little, oh, I'm a little higher level. <laughs> oh, so no. So remember we were talking about the skills before? So because he has a full adrenaline meter, Paul has the yeah. full yellow adren adrenaline meter, he can hold down L1 or L2 and activate, in this case, queue up any of his melee abilities, which includes health regen as melee for some reason. Yeah, which I just did. And that costs a bar of his of his adrenaline, and he gets adrenaline back again by doing combos and stuff like that. And so that's why it really comes down to picking which are the active abilities that you really want to rely on, and because you can only have four melee and four ranged, you are foregoing certain moves that you unlock and mm -hmm. saying, no, I really want to specialize more in this style of play or that style of play. And that's not something that was as apparent in Origins which had a more, I guess, um, rudimentary set of abilities and didn't certainly wasn't pushing you towards really pushing uh, the assassin stealth approach versus the you know, axe-swinging warrior approach. Which, uh, which route are you heading down? Are you heading down more of like the warrior route or the assassin route? Assassin? Hunter? Assassin route. Okay. Because the assassin stuff was kind of nerfed in, the, in Origins. You couldn't immediately do one-hit kills with a hidden blade. And... They began to address that stuff with some patches and updates and stuff like that in terms of how this, this would work. But here I found that I could upgrade certain skills and become a much more lethal from the Shadows Assassin just by by doing that stuff, and I like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I love the stealth in this game. Ugh, I can't not pick up this stuff. Sorry. Sorry, viewers. Oh, no! Yeah, the uh, somebody's pointing out in the chat that there's, this is just not an historically accurate game because... The people are wearing underwear under their <laughs> armor, right? Which you know, yeah, you gotta you gotta allow them some leeway. I think these creative liberties, yeah, yeah, yeah. But hey, I mean, I, I mean, I understand protesting game for historical accuracy is all the rage these days, right? Yeah, it's true. Man, these snakes got me stressed out. Why did it have to be snakes? Sorry, I had to do it. I I keep. I keep doing that by accident. Just laughing at you there, that snake. <laughs> Man, they're everywhere. Oh, that's just my imagination now. No, that's definitely a snake. Can't you do the the pulse? Do you not have the pulse thing? Or you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did oh. it, but I think it has like a very limited uh, reach, at least for now. You got your arrows back. Yeah. That's good. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm looking for uh, shiny stones. Somebody, somebody was joking that it's animal abuse, and actually, I feel bad for the animals. I've, I, I can't tell you how many wolves like come after me when I've been running through their territory, and like immediately I start you know, swinging my sword at them, and they're like whimpering. I feel, I feel pretty bad. Yeah, that's not a great feeling. I felt bad in Origins as well, as you're just like murdering hippopotami hippopotamuses, 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 yeah, whatever. The <laughs> what's the what's the technical term? Yeah, um, no, I, I feel the same way sometimes, except for snakes though. Snakes, uh, f that. Sorry for all the snake lovers. Oh God! <laughs> I think you can lock on to them too, you know. I want to like, can I Spartan kick a snake? I'm gonna try that on the next snake we'll I run into. that in the future. If you can do that, I mean, come on. Did you did you collect any ha um, severed hands in your inventory? <laughs> I did. I have some in my inventory. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, it is weird, and you can sell them. Yes, for eleven drachma each. I think it is. <laughs> well, that's kind of that's kind of a deal. They're much more specific in this game about the loot that you're getting, and much more varied. So there's just all kinds of weird things that you find that you're picking up and carrying in your, your inventory. Lots and lots of stuff carries over from Origins, including the um, the papyrus quests, which is one of my oh, favorite look. details. Oh, that's a weird I'm hovering snake. Spartan right? kick it. I Spartan kicked it. <laughs> and they have a variation on those here. So these are in like environmental like clues, and you find something hidden there. Um, I've played almost the entire game of what I've played in my eight hours has been set in Greece. There's only a very tiny bit of modern day, so I don't really know much of what they're doing with that. Um, no comment. 
In terms of who's hooked up in the Animus, this is a continuation of the modern storyline from, and they talked about this publicly already, from, from Origins, which introduced a character named Leila Hassan, and she's this uh, like dissident researcher for Abstergo, who's realizing Abstergo might be up to no good in some way, and is... Um, She's now using this portable animus to try to research some things about the past. You can choose to not display the silly hat, but I love silly hats. I can I can turn it off just so you can see more of uh Armistios. The one on the left is Theo, and the one on the right is Erla. Oh, what should I do? Should I be like, yo, this is kind of weird, or should I be like, oh yeah, no, no, no. I'm playing cool. my character as a jerk, but you uh, know. No, yeah, me too, actually. I'm trying to be a little bit of a... Okay. I, I have such a hard time being a jerk in games, so I'm going to be a jerk. Your friends? They're made of clay. How can they be your friends? <laughs> Excuse me. What do you mean? They're my friends. I made them. I know you made them, but Tata... Mata told me to make friends, Mythios, and, and oh. I did. This isn't the way to make friends. <sighs> Tell your mother that... I can't! She's dead, Mythios. Oh. Oh, jeez, Paul. Jeez. Steven, why'd you make me do that? Man? <coughs> told me she'll bring back so much Drachni. We could swim in it. But one day she came back, Mistios. Her favorite white robe oh, no. was all red. Jeez. She told me to take care of myself and make more friends. But I've never had any friends. I didn't know what she meant. I feel very so bad for this. Really it's terrible. And made my friends out of clay. Did I make a mistake? Mother won't be upset at me, right? Oh no. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. How could Paul do this? No, you did great. I can't. Oh, I can't oh, do this no, anymore. Dude, yes, the stuff that you gotta do. <laughs> should, I, should I just commit to the yes, bit? Yes, commit. Commit. Oh God. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here it goes. <laughs> you can't do this anymore. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> wow! What do you do? <laughs> oh no! Oh jeez! <laughs> there goes her hopes of ever going to art school, like me. You know what though? Not a bad decision. <laughs> I say that as an art school graduate. Go into the towns. Find it's tough love. Make some friends. Go go play some sports. All the town folk told me to stay away. They say I'm a cursed girl. Then go somewhere else. Find other people. That's right. Live your best life, girl. You just don't get it. You're not me. You don't <laughs> oh, understand. Damn. Go away. Damn. Wow. Tough love. Tough love. Sometimes you gotta give people the truth. You know what I mean? That was brutal. You gotta give people Making the truth. Making friends just the opposite. Wow. <laughs> I've been playing as a jerk, but now I feel like I gotta do the opposite. Oh no! Oh, uh, there's oh, more to come with her. Okay, come, I guess. Okay, okay. that's cool. Um, <laughs> here, let me take off the um, the helmet real quick, just so we can see his beautiful. There is a there's a lot of dialogue in oh. the game. I was really I've been astounded by how much conversation there is, often off the main path. Like that's not a main path quest or anything, right, Paul? That's no. just a side thing you found. Yeah. I found that in one case there was an extended series. There was a, like two or three side quests, lots of dialogue within those side quests, including the option to romance the character that, that, that I'm talking about, who I won't mention who the character is. And the culmination of all that was that I could recruit this person to be a lieutenant on my ship. And I think that I could have easily have missed encountering that character, missed the romance option, missed the multiple quests, missed the chance to have them on my ship. And, and provide whatever bonus they provide, the stat bonus they provided to being there. So it was like a whole extra like sort of tributary of, of game stuff to do there. Heather's yelling at me in the chat to disassemble my weapons. I promise I'll do it. I'm not going to do it on the stream because it'll be a very boring stream. This is a PS4 Pro or a regular PS4, Paul? This is a PS4 Pro, and we're not playing oh, in 4K. Is. There's no way we'd be able to stream that way. Yeah, we can't stream that, that way. Uh, let's go to the other pirate island. Which I, I don't think I've been to yet, so I think we'll get the um, the little like and the thing that says like, "Ooh, this is a new island." Yeah. Oh, look, and this is kind of cool too. When you when you come on the ship, sometimes like they're like dudes just wrestling or they're singing, chatting, nice. just killing time. In terms of changing hairstyles, I haven't seen any hairstyle change stuff. And there was the whole Bayek beard, no beard, couple different hairstyles. I haven't encountered that, Paul. Have you? No, not yet. I wish I could get a barber. Actually, I wouldn't mind a quick uh, a, a little shave or something. Yeah. Uh, let me just set a uh, let me set a waypoint from from myself. 
So we're going here to explore this island, which we haven't been to, which we are also told we can stream, so we're going to do that safely. Here we go. Somebody asked way back if there, if you fight Zeus, and they have in some of the promotional videos shown, I think they did the whole big thing at Gamescom, rather, where there was a fight against a Medusa, or a Medusa-like character, and they've talked a lot about how this game is telling the player a lot more about the first civilization, which is the most ancient thing in all of Assassin's Creed lore. And it's the idea that there was this mysterious society. Were they people? Were they something else? They had near magic level super technology or what have you. And they were like around Adam and Eve time, you know, such that Adam and Eve is, is historically a, an element there. Look at, the, look oh, at those, that dolphin formation there. That's Nicely cute. done. Um, and so this game is supposed to reference a lot of first civ stuff to the point that the spear that you have which you got from your grandfather leonidas is itself supposedly again this is according to what they said in pr kind of promotional stuff for the game a first civ object and that is then used to justify the fact that you have these magical like abilities like the like the teleportation assassination thing right they've also said characters like medusa characters of greek myth in the lore of assassin's creed ancient greek mythological characters are themselves manifestations in some way of the influence of the first Civ. So maybe the first Civ like cause has stuff that causes people to mutate or something like that. Yeah. So they're sort of playing with the mythological stuff. There was also just like a guy I encountered who was called Cyclops, but he wasn't the Cyclops. He yeah. just like didn't only had one eye that was real and his other eye had been knocked out. So it, they can play with it on that, that metaphorical level as well. But I'm pretty sure they have you fighting some variation of mythological creature. I can't wait to uh, check that out. I mean, hell, one of the DLCs is supposed to all be about Atlantis, right? So they're definitely into like the fantastical elements. I'm taking the scenic route just to show just to show off a little bit. But waves crashing right there. That I was know. nice. Look at that. Look at that. It's also nice when you like when you're on a beach and you're you're swimming out. You'll actually like they make a difference in your like your actual swimming, which is cool. Okay, so let's. Oh, here we go. I'm going to synchronize. That's a little far away, but I'm going to do it. You can get your horse out. Oh, yeah. Oh, do the... No, no, no. You don't have to stop running, Oh, yeah, buddy. yeah. Can you just, can just can keep just running. This is upgraded yeah, from yeah. Origins. And then just as the horse gets nearby, tap that triangle button. Come on, buddy. Here we go. Let him catch up. Come on, buddy. Just keep running. Don't stop. Don't stop for Let's him. Let's go, dude. And then triangle. Oh, look at that. yeah. Look at that. No stride broken. I should try to stay out of sight. Oh, that's a little bit. That's a little base there. We could actually do that too later, but um, I, I love doing the stealthy stuff. So let's go to the um, synchronization. There part. was a question of if the, the com boat combat is like Black Flag, very similar. Mm -hmm. You are, you know, going alongside a boat and firing out your arrows instead of cannons, your spears instead of instead of you know cannons again. I guess um, there are boardings, so you can jump over onto the other ship, fight people, gain some loot. They have pushed the gimmick that you can breach boats, which means basically sail into them on a perpendicular angle and try to crack right through them. They've also hyped up the idea that because there's so many sharks in the water, sharks will swim around in some way, feed on the crew, or, the, or people that have fallen into the water. Um, I haven't done a ton with naval, but is there anything else that jumps out to you, Paul, in terms of naval that you think people should know about? Uh, not really, not, not as far as I can. That's nothing that you haven't already covered. It's fun, I like it. Um, Definitely want to spend more time with it, though. I haven't, I haven't spent a ton of time with the naval stuff. Oh, it's up here. Climbing feels good, too. Yeah, so there's a, qu uh, a thought about... W this game feels more like uh, Witcher than Witcher 3, than Assassin's Creed. Look at this lion right here. Ooh. It's cool. Lion statue. I hope it doesn't come to life. <laughs> Actually, I wish it did. That'd actually be really cool. This looks kind of like the island that um, the witness was set on. So maybe you're gonna do some line puzzles. Oh god, no. we're gonna be here for three hours. I love the witness. I was so witness bad at that great. game. It Look, is. I it could is draw good. a line. Right, I would draw a line right there. There you go. You got it. I draw, I draw a line over there. <laughs> no, I'm terrible. At Declining the lion. You didn't. Paul, what's up? What did I do? What did I not do? Oh, I gotta jump off. Come on. I'm sorry. I got distracted by this loot. You really are playing as a jerk, man. I know. <laughs> but where can I... Where, though? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm <laughs> right into the fire? That should be try, safe, right? Try, try for the people, man. You gotta, there's got to be a way to eagle dive off this. 
Just push forward and see what happens. Oh God, what? Oh. This is not Assassin's Creed. I feel wait, like wait, go, go the direction he's facing, maybe? Yes, that's definitely made to be... Yeah, go in that direction. This, this is going to work. Uh, I don't know, what? man. I don't know. <laughs> wow. You already you already made me feel terrible about the my other decision. <laughs> okay. I feel like... So, yeah, somebody in the chat was making an observation that this game seems more like The Witcher 3 than, than the previous Assassin's Creed games. And you could say the same about last year's Origins as well. They clearly learned a lot from the success of that game. So you have everything from the fact that they went from a minimap driven navigation system to the radial dial. Mm -hmm. Witcher wasn't the first to do that, but definitely locked it in. Or the, the kind of question mark, fill out all the areas, you know, the mysterious areas of the map approach, which I don't recall being quite as abundant in previous Assassin's Creed games, although they did have maps full of points of interest. And even how side quests can be more, I would say, deeply written and unpredictable. And I feel like they actually got something really valuable that The Witcher 3 had done with in that regard. Because The Witcher 3's side quests are really commendable and how rich and interesting and unexpected they turn out to often be. But they also have moved away from some of the signature stuff of Assassin's Creed games. So this game, like Origins, as far as I've seen, has no social stealth. So you're not blending in with crowds. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have a hidden blade, although the Spear of Leonidas is essentially the hidden blade of this game. But it, as in Origins, it's not an instant one-hit kill on anybody you sneak up on. There are ways, unlike Origins, where you can level it up to do that. Well, I guess you could level up the hidden blade in Origins as well. But you can, you can basically make your assassination weapon more lethal. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. There's a mercenary. We should talk about the mercenaries in a second. But, um, yeah, there's a lot that isn't in here also because the Assassin's Order doesn't even exist yet in the time period that they're telling. And it's hard to say, actually, is this partially Ubisoft trying to move away from some of the classic stuff of Assassin's Creed permanently? Or is it because they've done this dip back into more ancient history that just canonically or, or, or contextually or whatever, it doesn't make sense to have that in there. So would they do this oh. kind of game this kind of game design for a more, you know, I don't know, 16th century, you know, setting and there, therefore include a lot more of traditional assassin creed, assassin type things. Who knows? We'll, we'll find out someday, I'm sure. That was, that was, that was wild. a really cool sequence. Yeah. Yeah. Now you got to loot the corpse. Oh yeah. Give me the loot. So you want to show the people the mercenaries? Yeah, sure. Those are friendlies, right? The two that you found there? Yeah. They, we don't have any beef yet. Oh, wow. That person was super high level. The, that oh, mercenary. was it? Yeah. It just showed it on your map. Oh, level yeah, 28. yeah, yeah. Yes. 44. So these, so there's mercenaries, tons of them throughout the game. It's an evolution of something that was in Origins called the Falakes, which were these dudes who just kind of patrolled around and were usually way high level. Eventually you would level up to fight them. This is an amalgamation of that in the Nemesis system. So Paul here is Tier 8. And there's tiers and tiers of mercenaries. They're more and more high level as you go through. Tier 9 are people he um, either had wiped out or there's new ones that replenish. It seems like some of it is procedurally generated or randomly generated, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you, these people are all in the game world somewhere. And they'll come after you if you start causing problems. So it's like a Grand Theft Auto style wanted meter. And hunt you down. And if they're really powerful, you're screwed. You can also go after them. Yep can track them i don't can, can you hire them or do anything else with them that you found no, i haven't i haven't been able to do that yet if, if it is available um but it is very scary when that that horn comes in comes on and burn when they're near uh especially if you're up to no good this guy's just having a good time um especially if you're up to no good just sort of like uh building up that wanted meter you know it's like yeah you had that wanted meter in Assassin's Creed Black Flag where if you were causing trouble on the high seas, eventually you'd have hunter ships come after you. The main creative people behind Black Flag would then worked on Origins, which had the system of those Falakes who were patrolling around who you could either hunt down or they would come after you more likely if, they were, if you were within their patrol zone. And then here, yes, it's enhanced. Not quite the nemesis system to the point where if you kill an average bad guy, they become somebody who's coming after you. Nothing quite like that. But the idea of this perpetually, well, I guess, is that a glitch or did that animal swallow that other animal? Oh, that's a glitch. Okay. That's weird. That's weird, though. That's It's our weird. first mythical creature encounter. Look at that. There were flies on those animals, too. That was kind of a gimme. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, try to look for a, 
side quest to do. Uh, somebody's asking, where is Tim Rogers? He is doing his professional video game expert analysis on Forza Horizon 4. Yeah, expect uh, that. I'll have a bit more for you on that. Expect that soon. Uh, yes, there is a Discovery Tour mode. I don't think it's in the game, but they already said that it was going to be in there um, at some point. And there's even uh, something that wasn't in Origins, as far as I can recall, uh, a thing called historical locations, where you're just walking around and it'll say, "Oh, this isn't an area. For, this is not an area for you to loot, but this is like an historical farm, mm -hmm. or this is an historical, I don't know, something else." And you can get a little bit of a text box that explains to you what the deal is with that. Notice the purple icon, and notice that we just got into a region where they told him who the leader was. So there is, as there have been in every other region, a great person or a leader of the area. They live in that house. Any other purple icons you see will relate to the power of that leader. And so you can start focusing, as I was saying before, on attacking things, stealing things, destroying things, killing people who are represent part of that leader's power and knock that power meter down and bring the leader out and take the leader, mer kill the leader, so that you can then switch control um, to to another faction. Man, this is. I just want to be here. That's a, that's a hint right there to run up that. And see what oh, happens yeah, yeah, yeah. But Look nothing. at these sweet <laughs> tricks. <laughs> well, didn't really get you anywhere. Parkour. Oh, wait, what are you... You're running up... Is that a boar yeah, or a Yeah, can I fight it? Is it going to attack the me? golden let's see, let's boar. See. Let's see if it attacks me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you have another You have another lookout point you can go to as well. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to do that. Oh, I thought I dodged that. I definitely didn't. So, so for like something like this, I definitely would want to switch to like a spear because like for boars and wild animals like right. these, it's super helpful. But I'm and you have the and you have Spartan the ability kick. to go between two different um, melee abilities. I don't. So that Spartan kick, Paul's using it. It's kicking enemies back. I don't even have it active because I, I want to have assassination moves at the ready instead. And so that's the, the combat choice they're getting, letting you make. Oh, oh man, I thought that I dodged. Come on, Assassin's Creed. Oh, there's another one. All right, I gotta switch over. I gotta switch over to my other weapon here. This I, I really like the daggers, but more so for just like regular contact. Man, I'm getting messed up. We probably don't have time to show that much more. Um, so if you guys want to hit us with some questions, yeah, uh, rapid fire out there in the chat. I'm trying to answer them. Let us know. Our time is gonna be uh, up soon, so we have to uh, stop streaming. No first person mode that I've seen. Nope. That'd be kind of cool though. I can show off photo mode a little bit. We can show that off, right? Photo mode? Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. I need to get out of here. Not really any different than... <laughs> Actually, accidentally... Let's take a beautiful photo activated of, this. of the boar fight here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Look really any that. different than the previous game from what I've seen. Um, Maybe let the... the Although, actually, display. I haven't seen what... What is edit mode? If you hit L3, what does that do? Here, I'll show you in a sec. So, yeah, if you hit L3... Then you can change the depth of field, exposure, the color temperature. Oh, I think you could do that on the other one too. I can't remember. You can also like activate these presets. Right. Which is kind of cool. But I'm getting my butt kicked. I need to uh, get the hell up out of here. I think if I just run, they'll let, they'll leave me alone. Sorry, I killed your friend. Don't know about visiting Zeus. Um, Poof. And in terms of the ship combat, similar to Black Flag, I would say, oh God. based on where I'm at in the game so far, again, only eight hours in, haven't done that much ship stuff. I can't say it's any improved over Black Flag from what I remember of it, and I actually prefer the the context of being a you know, pirate ship with cannons to what I'm doing arrows in this spears. with arrows and spears. But maybe it gets uh, wilder and crazier and cooler later on. I don't know. I'm trying to um, just GTFO real quick. Oh, here. Here we go. Another in terms of crafting here. unique weapons, I mean... Like, unique that they're only in your game and not in anybody else's. Like, I don't think anything quite like that. But there are definitely quests that give out rarer and rarer things. There is also some elements of microtransaction, loot box stuff. Might as well explain that a little bit in terms of what we've seen. Um, a lot of which has been shown publicly already. They, they bring back the daily quest system that was in the previous game. That in the previous game only resulted in um, randomized loot boxes of will you get cool gear... In this case, you can actually just buy stuff with the currency that you get from daily and weekly quests. And like in the previous game, you can also... They're also just making a ton of extra really cool-looking gear that you can buy with Helix credits, which is the longtime Assassin's Creed fictional currency that you can buy with real currency. 
unlock a little bit of it through other activities. If you remember, if you played Origins, you know that or like every month or so they'd put out some amazing looking gear, and they'd be like fifteen hundred Helix credits, which is like fifteen bucks, yeah, to get this stuff. Um, but they were like, by the way, you can also just get this randomly from the the random loot boxes if you do the daily quests, and then. Um, they were kind of late in incorporating that stuff into the rotation for the random loot boxes, so that was a bit of a fiasco. Um, but yeah, there's there's that extra stuff. The thing is, uh, Paul, I don't know about you, but there's so much loot in the game, I don't feel like I need any of that stuff. Yeah, there's a lot in this game in general, but yeah, loot is definitely one of them. So I feel like I'm not supposed to be here uh, based off of the red indicator up top, um, but I still want to dive because I didn't get to do that before. Well, actually, before you do that, can you just hold down the trackpad for a moment? Yeah. Oh, okay, you can't do it. Somebody was asking if we can do the day-night stuff. And yeah, you can. Yeah, but you can't do it there, so I'm just saying if you could, you could do it for them. So can you do an eagle dive off this? Is that sack of hay? Yeah, Come yeah, on, yeah. yeah. Yeah, full day-night cycle like the last game, and also you have the ability to, by holding down a button, just switch from day to night at will. I, I can show that off real quick. I, I well, mean, I, I when you yeah, get out of the zone. Heck out of here. Sorry. Um, he can't mark a merc in this area, despite the request, because the mercs are super high level. Yeah, I'm gonna get. So merc. he's got to avoid them and not really do anything to get their attention. Those boars are still looking for me over there. They're they're not happy. Look, they're just waiting for me. In terms of looking for realistic armor and stuff like that, yeah, I would say a lot of this stuff looks pretty realistic. Um. It's not all super fancy and ornate. AC1 remaster? I don't know, but they're doing an AC3 remaster in March. You sh you're excited about that. You, you yeah, like I really AC3, like AC3. Right? Yeah. Gets a bad rap. But uh, at this point, it could use some modernization of its systems and stuff, so they'll do that. But yeah, the day-night stuff right here. Still, I think, the only game to let you manually just like, dedicate a button to day-night changes. Look at that. Nighttime. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else we can show off before we call it a day here. But um, again, if you guys have any questions, let us know before we end the stream. Well, you can. You want to take them to that 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 place, Paul? I'll. I'll I don't want to get spoiled, but I think that would be oh, a nice finale. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen doesn't want to see, but I want to show off to everybody for the culture. It's not really a big spoiler, but uh, Stephen doesn't want to ruin it. He doesn't want me to ruin it for I'm him. I'm just gonna cover my eyes. He's gonna cover Just his imagine. eyes. Oh, that's a lion. What? Nope. You didn't see me, dog. Oh, he saw me. Uh, we might have to. This might have to end here. I don't no, know. You gotta show. You gotta show people. Oh God. I'm sorry. We've shown you a lot of uh, the rural environment, but Paul was really excited for you guys all. Oh, look. The oh, oh, okay. Saves the all day. right. Oh God. Nope. Nope. They don't save the day. <laughs> Paul was very excited for you guys to see Athens. Oop. So if we can get out of this battle, we'll just do a quick fast travel Stop. to Athens. It's not looking good. You can't fast travel while in combat. Oh yeah, yeah, I can probably fast travel. Let's do that. So you're, are you gonna not? You're just gonna no, close I'm your gonna, eyes. I'm gonna you're gonna on. watch. Okay. Here we go. Just run away. Oh yeah, this is a, this is a good place to start off too. So let's fast travel here. Oh wait, I can't do it while I'm in uh, combat. I think. Somebody's asking if this game is worthy of a full price or buggy wait for sale. Well, I mean that's not mutually exclusive in that you know. Your games can have bugs and what have you. Wait, you're not fast traveling? Or won't you? I was just trying to get away from them. I don't think I could while I was in combat. Okay. But just in terms of the amount of stuff to do, um, it's gargantuan. So oh, it's massive. It depends on whether you, if you pay for feeling like they're giving you their, their full effort. There's a full effort going on in this game. Traditionalist fans will be disappointed to know that there is no running loading screen. You're not running oh, yeah. in the, in the, the metaverse. Wait, somebody just said that they thought the map looked small. Oh, Wait, my God. Hold may, on. You may not have gotten as clear a look at the map. Yeah, let me zoom out for you. <laughs> the map is stupidly big. It's, like, ridiculous. That was one of the first things me and Heather talked about. Like, this game is huge. Yeah. This game is massive. I'm excited to show off Athens. This is one of the nicest areas in my opinion so far that I've seen I'm sorry Steven no that's fine <laughs> uh, let me hold on let me change it up to daytime well even that gives us a nice little pan of the city that's crazy look at how many settlements and houses there are that's amazing it really is 
Loading times for this game only happen when you fast travel or when you first boot up the game. Otherwise, it's smooth. The loading time is a bit long, I guess, if you're used to load times on PCs or what have you. But it feels to me the same way it was with Origins. Okay, so just for the um, just for the chat, real quick. This is where we are. Yep. Um, just to give you an idea. The game starts in Kefalonia on the, in the west. Starts over here. I mean. <laughs> This is huge. Yeah. It's pretty huge. And on top of that, just like the amount of water you have to travel across. Yeah. Each of these zones has tons of quests in it and things to explore and, and find. So, yeah, there's there is a lot to it. Quantity is not quality, obviously. For sure. So far, what I've experienced, uh, part of me is missing some of the, the traits of the older Assassin's Creed games. Because this is not very much. This isn't. There's no creed here, and there's kind of no assassins either. Mm. Um, but as it is just a game of ad having an adventure in ancient Greece, it's it's very impressive so far. Definitely. So cool. yeah, I'm just gonna take you through a quick tour of Athens. Just a quick little brief tour. It's about to rain or something, right? It looks like it. it's getting a little overcast, just like in uh, in real life over here. I went to Athens once. I remember yeah? it being kind of smoggy. I want to go. I want to go to there. Yeah, I just love how colorful it is. Even just like the floor having like flower petals and stuff on it. It's nice little touches. Yeah. It would be a little more colorful if we had a blue sky and so with the yeah the dusk or the... Like the idea of the statues were painted, and, you know, and not, that not everything is just white marble. You can see. Let's jump on there. this one. Oh, nice! Look at that. Uh, I don't. I don't have the uh, the fall damage thing yet, so I gotta. I gotta be cool. Whoop! Question about whether longtime Assassin's Creed fans will enjoy the game. Uh, longtime Assassin's Creed fans seem very torn about the direction the series has gone. So there are longtime fans who are like, "This is messed up. This these games should be about assassins and Templars first, first and foremost. There should be a deep modern day storyline, et cetera and so forth. And there shouldn't be choice because you're in the Animus and you're reliving a life that already existed. So how could you be making choices? Um, but then there's other longtime Assassin's Creed fans who might be like, well, hey, Assassins is always about having games set in historical eras that no other game is touching that have been produced by hundreds of people to really be just an incredible and a bit of historical tourism yeah. and uh, time travel in that way. And in that regard, and basically the idea of climb on everything, assassinate people as much as you can, it's, it still has that. And it technically is still part of this the same big saga. So there is stuff about, uh, I don't know about assassins and Templars, because again, it's so early in the timeline, but ancient first civilization stuff and what have you is here and they've talked even through like one of the expansions you will encounter the first person to ever have a hidden blade mm. this guy Darius who then gives the, his hidden blade then winds up in the hands of Bayek uh, the Origins character that's pretty neat yeah so they, they're connecting stuff in those ways but yeah it depends on whether or not this is a part of Assassin's Creed lore you're interested in and how you feel about them abandoning some of the, or at least deviating from some of the, the classic tropes of the series uh, final thoughts Paul you're gonna keep playing. You're gonna stop oh, and never play again. Pretty much, yeah. This weekend is uh, is gonna be tough for me. I don't know if I'm ever. I mean, like last weekend, I barely left the house just because I was trying to dig into this game. But um, yeah, I'm 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 digging it so far. I can't wait to play some more of it. Um, I'm also still relatively new to the series, so it's, it's cool to you know jump in. Uh, second game for me, but uh, I'm liking it so far. What about you? Any final thoughts? No, I just need to know. Uh, I need you to answer one question for me, Paul, before uh -huh. we end. Are you going to retain this save file or are you going to go back and be nice to the girl? Those were her No, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it. Because wow. you know what? Sometimes Owning his decision. Sometimes you got to give people the truth. You know what <laughs> I mean? You can't just be lying to people. Yeah, these are your friends. <laughs> okay, <laughs> everybody. Anybody out there in the chat whose friends are made of clay? <laughs> Don't get, even talk to me about that. Get some real friends. If you, if you want some truth, come to me and I'll, I'll tell you about we it. We thank all of you for joining in on our stream. Um, we'd be happy to stream more Assassin's Creed for you guys um, down the line if you're interested. Um, it would actually probably be pretty cool to have Heather um, uh, do some streaming of this game as well once she gets uh, around to doing her review next week. And, you know, maybe we'll do something for you sometime after that um, if, you, if everybody's interested. But, uh, yeah, thank you for this. And... Check out more Kotaku streams most weekdays around 1 p.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Friday.
See y'all. Peace.